Alrighty, so here we have a Wayward Strand being played on the Xbox One. So we've got settings. So we have gameplay, audio description on or off. That's it for that. Visuals, so font scale. Audio, so you have global volume. You can affect just dialogue, music, effects. You can go down to advanced effects and uh, determine how much volume you want for character movement, props, user interface, and the atmosphere. It's kind of cool to see that many options for audio. I'll go and continue. This is going to be just after the intro. Should be anyway. So this game we play as Casey, who is a teenage uh, girl helping her mother on a floating airship that's been decommissioned and um, is now a hospital. Here we are. Now, who are you? Um, Casey. Um, Casey. Wonderful name. Very original. Uh... I'm Esther. Nice to meet you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go solve a mystery about a ghost. Casey, Casey, come here. She said she's up for it. Right, okay. All right. Lily, this is Casey. Hi, Casey. I'll be busy in the general ward, so come see Lily if you need anything. Now, your job is to go to each of the patients' rooms and spend some time with them. Oh, Lily, did you find a spare fob watch? Yeah, I think so. It's here somewhere. See if the patients need anything, but otherwise just give them a bit of company. Got that? <sighs> yeah, found it! Great. All right, catch you later, Case. Bye, Mum. Okay, here you go. You can use it to keep track of the time. A lot goes on in a hospital. You can't be everywhere at once. I'll be busy today, so you're going to have to choose how you spend your own time. What should I do now? Mrs Vaughan's room is just down the hall. That's a good place to start. She's really friendly. If I'm not off doing something, I'm usually just here. So head back any time you need help. So essentially, you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, oh, excuse me, you can spend time doing things you want to do. You could spend your time reading. You could spend your time um, eavesdropping on cafeteria um, patrons. You can spend your time staring out the window. You can, uh, you can read. Uh, you can do as they've asked you to do, which is visit time with, with, uh, with patients. Get things for them, spend time with them. Um, get to know them. And what's really cool about this game is that all of the characters in the game have their own lives independent of what you choose to do. At the same time, um, all of your choices affect the way the game plays out. So it's pretty unique in the, in the sense that... So like for instance, if I never visit Esther, she's going to continue to live her life um, and things are going to happen regardless of whether or not I visit Esther like I was told to do or not. Um, which is really kind of cool. And then the dialogue choices, like I said, the dialogue choices um, affect um, how the characters interact with you, how they perceive you, and and, uh, and uh, helps to um, affect the story. So I can visit Miss Vaughn, right, instead of visiting Esther if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and visit Miss Vaughn. Hello, dear. Come in, come in. Casey Bomaris. My, you must have grown a mile a minute since I last saw you. How tall you've grown. Nice to see you, Mrs. Vaughn. Ida. Please, Ida. We're all friends here. Welcome to the hospital. Come in, please. Make yourself at home. So you can 
say something, I can leave, I can hang out for a while, I can look at my notebook. Um, I love the uh, the overall art style of the game. I love the aesthetic. Um, I love how all of the dialogue is voiced, so you don't have to sit here and read mountains of dialogue, uh, which is really kind of nice. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> and uh, just just that, that this kind of goes to show you you've sat here for what three four minutes, and the game even though it's, even though you're idle, the game says, "Hey, you know you're you're idle." Do you you know it, it it treats the character as if you're just you're really there sitting there not doing anything. That's why she asked, "Hey, do you want to choose?" It's really kind of awesome. That it does that. It gives you a real sense of immersion, even if even though it's a third, it's a game from a third person perspective. Uh, let's go ahead and do it for holidays. I prefer the holidays. I get to read whatever I want. Oh, lovely. Are you reading anything interesting at the moment? Yeah, a detective story. Oh, I love those. I haven't had my little library brought up to the ship yet. I lent it all to my nephew in Kongwak. Once I've got them again, maybe we can do a book swap. Do you know anything about this airship? A little, I suppose. I thought you had been up here for a while. Well, yes, a few months now. But I was only really told what was in the brochure. What did the brochure say? Just that this ship used to be a luxury German airliner. Luxury amongst the clouds. Oh, Mr. Proust would be a good person to ask. He was a passenger on the ship, I believe, back when it was in commission. His room is on the level below this one. In the same spot, I think. I might go and have a look around. Okay, then. I'll see you later, dear. Hey, Case. Oh, hey. I don't think I've ever seen a uh, adventure style game quite like this. In that it's so immersive and just so different um, in the way that it presents itself. You have characters that are going amongst, they're going along with their lives, um, regardless of what you, what you do. At the same time, the game, um, <laughs> the, the game recognizes your actions and your dialogue choices. And your inactions. This game is just... It, it's its awesome. Uh, I want to thank the, the yeah, publisher for the opportunity. This game this game's beautiful. It's fun. Um, if you want an adventure style game that's extru that's very unique, um, this game's definitely worth worth checking out. Uh, I want to highly recommend. Um, and I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for subscribing. And as always, until next time. Take care and happy gaming.